Good morning and aloha. Uh, it's been a really tough week this week at Middle School North. As you know, uh, we did lose a student this week. And like many other students who struggle, I saw a lot of myself in uh, this particular student. Um, middle school was not an easy time for me. And um, it wasn't until my mid-teens or late teens that I really started to kind of figure things out um, through uh, Boy Scouts and achieving that Eagle Scout rank. Um, that was really kind of what turned me around, um, you know, within that middle school time. And so, um, you know, it's always... Um, as adults, you know, we really uh, a lot of times share the struggles of our students and in, in a very real and visceral way. And uh, this was was no exception. Um, you know, I might have shared before that I don't have kids of my own. And so a lot of times I have to kind of put myself into that parent mindset and you know, one of the ways that I do that is, of course, I, you know, talk to a lot of parents, you know, both my brothers have kids of their own. And uh, I listen to a lot of podcasts and read books and so on. And just just listening is is a big part of that. And one of the things that I think I um, hear again and again from from parents is to the to um, really lean into those hard conversations um, with kids. And so, um, you know, modeling that listening um, and, and developing that sense of empathy that I think is really important. And that's one of the things that I recently heard in one of the um, podcasts that I listened to that I'll link on here um, called the Backwards Podcast. And, and, I think that is a, a really good one to listen to. It's about uh, 24 minutes or so, 25 minutes or so. And uh, just does a really nice job of kind of explaining those uh, types of things. And it's also um, kind, of kind of one of the cornerstones of the Indiana Crisis Assistant Response Team that was here this week that um, also provides some really good uh, tips for parents as far as helping them deal with some of the trauma that comes along with, um, you know, modern society, as well as events like what has transpired here at Middle School North this week. And so um, I'll put a link to that in, in here as well. And uh, they just provide some really great tips. Um, I know, you know, I've been through this before, unfortunately, and uh, the, the tips that they provided to teachers were really invaluable as far as uh, just kind of providing me a framework that I can um, kind of organize my thoughts and respond to questions kids had in a very supportive and um, appropriate way of, of dealing with that. So as far as where we're at in uh, science this week, uh, we are finishing up the, you know, uh, periodic table. Uh, it's looking like the quiz for that will probably be on Tuesday of next week. And um, this is going to be a notebook quiz. So as always, they can use their notebook on the quiz. And I would suggest that, you know, maybe this weekend sitting down with them and just kind of looking through their science notebook. Um I do have a notebook that I keep along with the students, and they're always welcome to come up, take pictures of mine, and you know record that information into their science notebook so they can use it on the test. Uh, a lot of those materials are also shared in Canvas, and so if you want to, you know, kind of click through the different assignments within that module, um, that can also be helpful. As far as in science. Uh, science, we've finished up, you know, cell respiration, and now we're talking about photosynthesis. Uh, we'll probably be um, finishing that up next week. Uh, I would actually like to be able to give the quiz 
or the test to my that honors biology group at the end of next week, but that's not going to be possible because we have some COGAT testing that's going to happen on Friday. And then on Thursday, we have an author visit. So I'm probably, I'm going to have to push that until that second week in November is when that's going to have to be pushed to. But um, with regard to that COGAT testing, uh, that is one of the um, data points that we do use to put kids into their high school classes. And so um, I'll put a link to some information on, you know, what the COGAT testing is. When I was doing research preparing for um, this uh, notification, I did find a video on YouTube that talks about the different parts of it that I'm going to link to. Um, it does have a sales pitch at the end of it, which, you know, take that, leave it, whatever. Um, I don't in any way endorse what they're um, selling. I don't have any idea, you know, what that company is, but their, their examples that they give, I think are really good as far as giving you some background, as far as what kind of questions to expect. Um, the COGAT test is a little different than like other tests because it's kind of a IQ test, you know, back in the day. Um, and so it is not something that kids can really prepare for in the sense of the content, but it might be helpful uh, to help them prepare for it in the sense of like what type of questions to expect and just familiarity with, with you know, the process and what kind of questions and those kinds of things. So I'll put some links to those as well. And again, you know, uh, use it. Cool. If you don't want to use it, cool. It's not a big deal. Um, you know, the, the, the biggest thing is just, you know, providing um, support and empathy to our kids, you know, during these times, because it is, um, that's really what's most important. So thank you so much. Have a, a great Halloween um, and we'll see you back on Monday.